Hello everybody, this is Michael Smiley coming at you with another review video. Um, today I want to talk about the Arrowverse on the CW. The Arrowverse, the Arrowverse consists of Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, and Legends of Tomorrow. Now, I haven't seen enough of Legends of Tomorrow to cover in today's topic, um, but I have watched The Flash. Um, and Arrow, and Supergirl. So, I just want to talk about some of the hopes, plans, etc. Thoughts, feelings, concerns about each one of the shows here that I've seen so far. So, let's start, let, let's start with Arrow. Arrow was an excellent show. It's called the Arrowverse from the fandom of it's a DC show on the CW. Um, and it kicked off, it was a huge hit and it kicked off several different spinoffs. You have the flash. That was the first spinoff. Um, followed by shows like Supergirl and legends of tomorrow and it inspired the network to kick off Black Lightning, even though Black Lightning isn't technically part of the Arrowverse, but I do want to cover that today, too, because it's still a DC comic, and technically, without, you know, Arrow and all the rest of the shows being hits, Black Lightning really wouldn't be on the network. So I do want to cover that as well. So... <clears throat> Again, this is a prime example of the CW being the most underrated network. Like all the other networks have are filled landmined with procedural shows, right? Well, the CW, a big part of its lineup is DC Comics uh, shows. And, um, but but the CW really does have variety. Like they have all these superhero shows, but they also have they also had Rain, a historical uh, drama. They had the Vampire Diaries. They have uh, Legacies and Charmed and all these uh, and the One Hundred. And every single show is vastly different from one another. So even the superhero shows. Even even the Arrowverse is vastly different from each other. So if you want not much comedy and a lot of action and seriousness, you'll watch Arrow. That the one that kicked off the entire thing. Um, I did watch. I'm not completely caught up on on Arrow. Uh, but I've obviously watched multiple seasons. It is a really great show. It has such amazing acting quality and and action and, and the whole nine yards. Um, but I think that the show for me, the only complaint that I really have is that it takes itself too seriously. And... <sighs> You have to rely on, like, different characters for, like, comedy or relief and stuff. Um, because the, the, um, the hero, or the vigilante, is, um, very straightforward, very serious. I mean, he does have his moments of humor, but it's very, very far few and in between. Um... My favorite show, or my favorite character in Arrow is Felicity. Um, and it's sad that they announced that she was leaving and that she is done after season seven. Um, because Arrow has been renewed for a eighth and final season, which is an extremely incredible... Um, an extremely incredible um, life for a show like because Arrow is like 22 or 23 episodes a season 
I mean, until the last season. The last season's only going to be eight episodes or something like that. But, um, yeah, that's, that's an extremely excellent run for any show. That's a great run. That's something about the CW is that they, they're very fan oriented. They are very, um, they see things through to the end. They give fans closure. Um, they, uh, because they are a smaller network, they don't um, invest all their money in, you know, a show, and then if it doesn't get ratings, then they cancel it or whatever. I mean, shows have to hit extremely low ratings, or and, but a lot of times the CW just finishes out a series without canceling it. They just they're they're just done with the show because they're done with the story, which is the best thing that a network can do because they're doing that with Supernatural after 15 seasons Arrow 8 seasons and this is without canceling this is just ending the story so you have Supernatural, Arrow, The Vampire Diaries um, those and, and The Vampire Diaries lasted 8 seasons so it's full life that is given to these shows that are saw through to the end of their story not just ratings and all this other stuff no that's just strictly a, you know the creative process where it had a beginning middle and end and that was you know but anyway getting off track and getting back on this arrow verse business <clears throat> so arrow is very serious very action-packed um and it's gloom and doom a lot. Um, it is heavily, and I do not use that word lightly, it is heavily inspired by, by, by Batman. Um, if the CW were to ever do Batman, I don't know how they would do it because they have already done it with Arrow. <laughs> um... You know, he's the rich billionaire who's a vigilante and he fights crime in a city. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he's, I, I don't know, I think that that's probably why I love it, though, because I used to be a Batman fan. I mean, I love Batman still, but, I mean, Ben Affleck is not Batman, so, um, it kind of has a bad taste in my mouth right now, just thinking about that. But, um, yeah. So, gloom and doom, serious, action-packed, but it is a great quality show, and I highly recommend it. Um, I think that they already aired their season 7 finale or they're about to but all previous six seasons can be found by the way all of these shows from the CW network can be found on Netflix so all six seasons of Arrow right now are on Netflix if they've aired the season 7 finale then eight days after it aired is when it will be on Netflix because that's the deal that the CW has with Netflix. <clears throat> so, The Flash. Uh, actually, The Flash is one of those shows where when it first started, I wasn't into it, but I did catch like an episode here and an episode there kind of thing. But... I'm sorry, guys. Um, my second show, the of the Arrowverse that I did watch from the beginning onwards, like the whole thing in a row, is Supergirl. Uh, Supergirl is probably my favorite. 
of the Arrowverse up until this point. Um, because you don't have to... It, it is serious when it needs to be. It is comical when it needs to be. Um, yeah. I mean, it is a run through of emotions. It's a roller coaster ride. It is a fun DC show. Um, now, because the CW has such um, quality and does their their superhero shows, well, all their shows, really great. But we're talking superheroes here. So, in my opinion. I think that the Marvel movies as a whole, not individual, but as a whole, are better than the DC movies as a whole. Um, however, DC shows, especially on the CW, are light years better than the Marvel shows. Um... And I've checked out quite a few Marvel shows, uh, but it just it, it doesn't have my interest like the the DC shows, and I don't know why. Um, it just doesn't click. So um, anyway, back onto Supergirl. Supergirl is airing its fourth season right now, and I believe that that's going to be airing its season its fourth season finale soon. So that shall be on Netflix soon. That's the only season I'm behind on, um, because of work and everything going on, so I'll have to binge watch that when it gets on Netflix, because I've only watched, like, four episodes of season four, and there's 22 episodes, so I'm kind of doing really bad there, but the first three seasons, it's one of those shows that it gets better with each season. It doesn't start really strong and then die off, or it doesn't start, you know, good and then get strong and then die off. It's gotten progressively better. And what I did see of season four is works upon and builds upon the first three seasons. So I'm really excited to catch up. And I think that it is, in my opinion, the best of the DC shows. Um, because it has heart. It has heart. Um... The only, the only complaint is actually that a, a character is missing or not involved as much, and I, I think that that has to do with the actress, not the writers. But Harrison Ford's wife actually plays for Cat on Supergirl, and I really love her character. Um, at first... You just want to strangle her, but you really grow to love her, and that's the only complaint is that she's been missing for a hot minute, and then they, like, threw her in for a little bit, and then now she's missing again. I don't understand what's going on with that. I don't know if it's the actress's choice to take time out for her family, or whatever the case is, but that's literally the only, the only complaint that I have. I... I think that the show has heart and soul, and I I think that that is extremely important. It's not straightforward action, serious, gloom and doom, none of that. I mean, it does have that, but when it needs to, um, Supergirl is, um, she is, um, She's the most relatable. She is the the people the people's girl. She is the girl next door. She's giggly and ditzy sometimes, but she can also be smart and serious when she needs to be. And um, she it's very she's very human, even though she's alien. Um, and I, I just love all of it. I love the story. I love all the supporting characters. I love the villains. You know, the whole nine yards. So I really highly recommend Supergirl. You can watch 
the first three seasons on Netflix. The fourth season is about to be on Netflix um, in the next week or two. Because <clears throat> they're going to be airing its season finale. So, on top of that, I went back and watched The Flash, start of The Flash. I'm on season three of The Flash. So... <sighs> I must be really tired, guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, so the Flash, the Flash is the Flash is like the male counterpart of Supergirl. Uh, the show is really high quality. Um, great supporting actor or supporting characters. Really great acting. Uh, really great pacing. It's serious when it needs to be. It's comical when it needs to be. Um, yeah, it's like the male version of Supergirl. I mean, obviously, they're completely two different heroes and abilities and people and everything and different backgrounds and all of that good stuff. But I'm talking about, like, the human aspect. I think that that's why The Flash is such a huge hit is because he's very relatable. Um, he's the average guy next door who happens to now be a superhero um, with ability that was caused by a freak accident type thing um, or you know a lightning bolt anyway um, but I, I really do now I'm I'm way behind on the flash too but I am on season three. Um, season one was really good. I, I think that season two was excellent. I really, really did love season two. Season three, the reason why I can't get through season three is because it's kind of like... I don't know. They're doing a restart thing, or not a restart, because I don't want to say that because then it's going to turn off the viewer. And it's not the right choice of words. Because there's... Uh, th the problem is, is that there's a lot of time jumping in the... Um, in the Flash. Which I think is the biggest problem. Because it ruins a lot of things that had already happened. Or... Um, it mainly has to do with like char character interaction. And the, the things that had already happened... And stuff like that. And it's just ruining the effect because now it just never happened kind of thing. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I do love the multi-universe slash Earth idea. I think that that's really uh, creative, interesting, cool. And um, the crossovers are phenomenal. Because Arrowverse does an annual crossover... Um, crossover event is actually what it is, and what it does is it, it it's TV's version of the Avengers, uh, for DC, where all of the superheroes from the Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, all band together because they have to to fight a bigger evil than any of them can take individually, type thing. Um, and, but I really do highly recommend The Flash. Um, I do have to get back into it because of work. <sighs> work. Um, and I will finish it. I will fight through that because it is a really excellent show. And I really do need to catch up. And I think that that's also airing its season finale, or already did, so that should be on Netflix as well. Um, Black Lightning. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about Black Lightning for a second. Black Lightning, I watched, I, like I said, I haven't seen really of any Legends of Tomorrow, so I can't really talk on that. Um... I only have seen each of the characters from the shows that they came from that are in 
Legends of Tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so, Black Lightning. Watch that. And it is an incredibly great show. Great quality, great acting, great cast, great uh, storyline. Um, and I like that he's not a superhero where they have to go through the origin story and all that stuff. Because he's already been there and done that. This is a... He has kids and a family to protect and... You know, he wants to keep his city safe kind of thing. And, um, you know, the comic books have been out forever, so... Uh, spoiler alert ahead. Um, his daughters find out that they have abilities because, obviously, they're his daughters. And so they are genetically uh, have different abilities that aren't even lightning um, but anyway so I think that that's cool because they didn't all you know they're dealing with it in their own way he's having to deal with the transition of his family and the state that his city is in and his past, which is, you know, has to do with a, a criminal that's on the loose and really is out for blood and vengeance. Um, yeah, it's a really crazy story. It's really great. I think that they're doing an excellent job. I love how they are keeping it out of the crossovers um, so far. I mean, it'd be really cool to eventually see him in the crossovers, but I like that they're trying to find their own footing, or that, you know, that they're trying to find their own footing before they step into someone else's territory. <clears throat> I really do like that. Um, I think that the special effects are really great. Uh, and I can't wait to see more. I know that uh, just wrapped up its second season. Yeah, it just wrapped up its second season, and the first two seasons are on Netflix as well. Uh, so, And I highly recommend that show. Um, the only show that I really need to get into and watch is Legends of Tomorrow. Um, but I ha her have heard very mixed reviews about that show. Um, not from critics, uh, because I don't really care what the critics have to say, because a majority like stuff that I don't like, and they don't like stuff, a majority of them don't like stuff that I like. So, it is what it is, it's an opinion. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, then I'm, I'm going to eventually check out Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, but I, I heard mixed reviews from uh, family and friends that have actually watched it. And out of all the DC shows, that's the only one that they really don't care for. So um, I trust their judgment, but I still at least wanted to watch a episode of Legends of Jafar. Ugh. Ugh. If I can speak today. Um, I will watch at least one episode of Legends of, Legends of Tomorrow to just see if anything like clicks. To see if it's something that I personally would want to, you know, watch and invest my time in. Um, and let's see, Black Lightning, I don't think Black Lightning had 22 episodes for both seasons. I know that it started out with 13 episodes for its first season. Pretty sure that they kept that or bumped it up to only 16 and not 22, but I could be completely wrong about that. I know that Legends of Tomorrow is one of the only shows on the CW Network that... Um, hasn't had more than like 15 episodes a season. Um, the 100 is another one that hasn't done more than 15 episodes a season, but that's because they put a lot of 
money and time into that show. And it shows because the 100 is absolutely incredible. It's an incredible show. Um, one of the best shows ever made. But anyway, so the good news is if I do binge watch um, Legends of Tomorrow, or if I do like it after watching the first episode, then it won't take me long to catch up because it's much shorter seasons. Um, the other seasons on the CW are 22 episodes, or 23 in some cases. I know that The Flash, I think, runs at 23 episodes a season. So it's like, okay, <laughs> I have to eventually catch up, but I have a lot of catching up to do. <clears throat> So, guys, I highly recommend you guys to check these out because <clears throat> the CW is so underrated and these shows are so underrated. Um, I think that more people should know about these shows. I don't think enough people know about these shows because um, if shows... Like, I'll use Marvel, for example. If Marvel and their shows can get viewers, or a lot of viewers, then the DC shows should, you know, they deserve to topple an audience and everything, the Marvel shows, because... I'm, and I'm not bashing Marvel shows at all. I, I do think that they have good story and everything. I just don't think, overall, that they are better than the DC shows. At least not from the CW. Because the CW just does awesome with their shows. Um, but, again, Marvel does make... their The way that they do their movies is vastly so much better than how DC is doing theirs. The only... I mean... I thought that Man of Steel was really excellent, but I think that Wonder Woman and um, Aquaman are by far... They're, they are like by far in their own universe when it comes to quality and everything. Everything about those two movies crushes the the rest of the DC universe and Wonder Woman and Aquaman really do compete with any Marvel movie, um, and, and that's amazing. So I I think that if they continue the route of doing Aquaman and Wonder Woman, and if they were if they could do that with the rest of the DC you know the DC characters, then that would be great. Um, one thing that I did hear is that, um, now this is just a rumor, but obviously it's gaining momentum because, um, outlets are reporting about it, is, um, they might be doing a Wonder Woman movie. Now that's a problem for me, because... First of all, or, did I say Wonder Woman? No, that's not what I meant. I meant Supergirl. Um, gosh, I really am tired. Holy crap. Um, we already have a Supergirl movie, or Supergirl show. And it's now in its fourth season, and we are already connected. Okay, it already has its own fan base. And... And the story and everything about Supergirl, the show, is incredible. So, why do you have to make a movie? I, I think that it has its pros and cons, but I think it has more cons than pros. The, the pros are is that um, it's going to make more people aware of Supergirl like the newer generation more aware of Supergirl. And that's it. I don't I don't want anybody else playing for Supergirl. I don't want anybody else playing for any of the supporting cast. I don't 
No. We already have story. We already have the story that they already did. They have great special effects on the show already. There's no need to do a Supergirl movie. Um, and that's part of the reason why I um, was so judgmental about Captain Marvel. Because um, Cara Danvers is... Or Cara Danvers is... Um, Supergirl... And she has blonde hair, blue eyes. She's a superhero with powers. Captain Marvel is blonde haired, blue eyed, superhero with powers. And her name is Carol Danvers. Um, so I immediately. And that was not the first incarnation of Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel actually started off as, a, I think, a man alien or an alien man. Um, and then it, it just changed throughout or whatever, but because, it, you know, we are, we do live in the time period that we do live in and things of the current state of the world and everything, of course, they went with the woman, Carol Danvers, that incarnation of Captain Marvel. So I immediately went in so judgmental about it, but it really was an amazing movie. Um, but that's a topic for a different story, a topic for a different uh, post. Um, but there is no need to, and, and I really say this because DC is known for not liking to have their characters that they're having for their movies onto their shows on TV. Um, and I can see why, because fans, would, you know, they already have their version of that character. And it split the fandom and all that good stuff. And But, so, if they were to do a Superwoman, sh a Supergirl show, they need to do it without canceling the show. I mean, if they were to do the movie, they need to not cancel the show. Um, because I know that DC is not allowing Batman to be on the CW because he is involved in movies right now. Um, and after Affleck stepped down from his role... And now there's a bunch of chaos going on about Batman. They let uh, Gotham have the suit and everything for their series finale or whatever to show Batman on TV for the first time in forever. Um, but I'm really happy that they're that the CW is not doing a Batman show because they decided to take the role of Batwoman. Not, not Batgirl, not Batman, Batwoman. And she's playing, being played by Ruby Rose. I hope that the CW picks that up. I'm really excited about that because Ruby Rose did play as Batwoman in the last crossover that Arrowverse did. Um, and she did really excellent. I would be so interested in watching a Batwoman show. And their version of Gotham is gloom and doom and dark and everything. But Ruby Rose just has that serious dry humor that just really sticks out. And she's a really great actress. And I, I really am excited about the Batwoman series. I hear that they already filmed the pilot. I'm really super excited that Rachel Scarston, that played for Queen Elizabeth I in Reign, also another CW show, um, she's going to be the villain, uh, the main villain of Super of um, Batwoman. So I am so excited about that because when she's the villain and she has that ad attitude and all snarky, I can't even imagine their um, interactions, Ruby Rose and Rachel Scarston, how their interactions are going to be. I'm so excited about that. <clears throat> so... Um, 
that that's going to be something to look forward to. Um, especially since Arrow is um, ending after its eighth season. Um, Batwoman is going to breathe fresh life into the Arrowverse. I, I do wholeheartedly, genuinely believe that. That she will breathe fresh life into this universe that they have going on on the CW. So... That's something to look forward to. Um, I would be perfectly fine with a 13-episode first season, um, even if they didn't do 22-episode seasons. I mean, if they wanted to do 22-episode seasons, that's perfectly fine, too. Um, it's just when you have a 22-episode season, you have to come up with you know, a lot of story, a lot to go on and everything, which is fine because the CW does perfect with that. But, like, with other networks, it's kind of worrying because it's like, how, how much can you rehash here? Because, it, you know, most other networks have procedural shows. And it's just, like, rehash, 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 and no progress. No progressive story. That's the only worrying thing when you have 22-episode stories is... Or 22-episode seasons is a progressive story. And the CW has done more than excellent at taking care of business when it comes to that. So, <clears throat> I'm really excited about that. So, um, if you like my review, guys, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Um, like and comment um, below this video, and have a great day, everybody. Until next time.